right, it is time for my final 18 of 2018 wrap up and update. Update and wrap up all in one, all in one. Hey everyone, it is Shannon and I'm super excited to be here today and to share with you my final update and wrap up for the 18 of 2018 challenge and project. This is a project uh, or a challenge that I set myself in the summer of this year where I recognized that I wasn't watching a lot of new releases, be they film or TV, and I wanted to challenge myself to watch 18 new releases that were released in 2018 by the end of 2018 and I have done it I actually it's funny because it sort of trickled in and I watched a few things and I did an update and then it got a little quiet and then like the new fall tv came out and then like you know how like October where all the scary movies came out and like and then I was like I did the numbers and I was like oh <laughs> I'm done <laughs> I'm done. So what I've decided to do is to split the TV and film and to do to do separate videos for each of them. And I'm just going to wrap them all up because I talked about a couple in my first update, but you know, like that was so long ago now. So for this one, I'm going to talk about the films that I watched and let's get this party started. So one of the ones that I already talked about and the parameters were that they had to be released this year. And if that meant that could also mean they first became available in your region this year. So if something came out in some somewhere else, but you did not have access to it last year, but it came out in your area this year, then it counts. That was the parameter I used. But the first thing I watched was a Netflix original and was only available this year, so it counts by default. And that was Extinction. And this is a speculative fiction-y, science fiction, near future, invasion-y, question-y film, and um, I quite enjoyed it. I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a great way to get the ball rolling for 18 of 2018 because there's so many times where there'll be a new release on Netflix. Often, actually, for a while in the summer, it felt like every weekend there was a new Netflix original movie, and I often went, oh, that looks interesting, and I added it to my list, and then it just stayed there. So I started the whole project off by just jumping in and watching the first one and it was Extinction. And it was okay. Like it was enjoyable. Um, you know, it's not the, the best movie I've seen this year, but I ha thought it had some interesting ideas in it. And I did say speculative fiction because some of it is sort of more thinky, like, um, like questioning and pondering and what if situations. So for me, I would put it a little more in speculative fiction, although you could easily put it as science fiction, you can put it as action, you can put it maybe as adventure, maybe? No, no, not adventure, maybe. But me and eh, almost horror, almost horror. <laughs> Almost are. Um, and then the next movie that I watched, which I almost didn't realize, I almost didn't include because I thought it came out last year, but the timing got pushed back, and that was Ready Player One. I couldn't find I couldn't find a poster that had the title and had it like the way that I wanted it. So anyway, I, just hope, I imagine people. I don't know if people remember the poster for Ready Player One. Anyway, this is um, based on the book by Ernest Klein, which I read a couple years ago, and it is set, again, near future, <laughs> speculative fiction, um, and it's set in a world that's sort of post-apocalyptic, and I don't know if there was an apocalypse or it was just an economy drop, and um, people don't live in the, like, there's not that much going on out there in terms of natural resources, at least where our protagonist, uh, Wyatt? Wyatt, um, what? Why? I can't remember where he lives. And, um, but most people spend their time in the Oasis, which is a virtual reality space. You can see he's wearing a virtual reality thing. People go to school there. People work there. People escape there. Um, and then there is a big, most people probably know the premise of this, but anyway, <laughs> the, then there is, um, um, someone, just someone, the person who created the space, um, the Oasis creates also, a game within the Oasis and whoever wins the game will be um, like rich beyond like anyone's means because he was like the richest person. So anyway, I had read the book. I didn't love the book. Um, I had some like I just thought I think it's a really great um, uh, what's that called? Um, gateway book like if you haven't been reading for a while and if you have any familiarity with the 80s it's a really great book because you just really get in there you want to know what happens you see the references there's tons of gaming and pop culture references like the references are just 
all over like there's so many of them and there's tons of them in the film and some of the ones in the film are newer but they were fun like I just treated that as fun um, and I did enjoy it I watched this one with my family so we enjoyed a lot of the nods to all of the different things they did make some changes some of which I was totally okay with because it actually just made it so that if you read the book as well it was something interesting and engaging to to see um, um, but some of the changes I wasn't a huge <laughs> And uh, some liberties were taken. Um, but uh, yeah, but overall, I'm glad that I watched it. And I think I talked about that one in my last video too. So I think that gets us up to date because now we get into the spookier side of things. And so the next one that I watched, and this one's kind of almost a bit of it. Wow, it's hard to get really dark, dark. Um, this is Winchester. This stars Helen Mirren. It is... Uh, horror movie based on the Winchester house, which is a real place, I think in, it's in California, um, and um, where lots of spooky things have happened. And I watched this with my sister Susie, and we've watched, watched lots of horror movies together over the years, so it was really fun to watch this together. Um, and to me, I have to actually, I almost didn't include this in the list because I actually have to watch it again because I may have perhaps fallen asleep while watching this. But I'm still including it. <laughs> it was it was from the, you know, 85% of which I watched. I enjoyed it. It was okay. Um it was like like Helen Mirren's always great. Um but you know, it, you know, it was it was a little better than I expected, but not it's, it's hard, to, sometimes, especially with horror movies, I have a hard time saying how good they were because there's so many levels of horror and I don't like to levelize things. I like to equalize things. So I will say that I enjoyed it. I hope to, I will rewatch it. It is on Netflix, at least here in Canada. And um, yeah, so it was fun, scary movie. And then I went on to 31 Days of Horror because um, I actually watched Winchester. We watched it right at the end of September. And then I started watching, I didn't end up getting 31 movies in, but I did watch a fair amount. I can't remember how many, it's on Letterboxd. I have a list if you're interested. But I started things off on October 1st with Delirium. And this is a, kind of a more of a thriller horror movie, We, which is centered on um, a guy who's in his early 20s, I think, who has been in um, some kind of mental health facility for most of his, like a fair chunk of his life, teen to... 20s um and to part um so he's been released but it's conditional he has to like stay inside his family home and do certain things to meet the conditions of his release basically um and so it's an interesting one that it's you know it's got a limited uh location, uh, limited cast. Patricia Clarkson is also in this. Um, and I thought it was quite good, especially in terms of a thriller. Um, although because I watch a fair amount of horror and thriller, I had a sense of where they were going. Um, and But I did think that they had some interesting sort of discussion as well on some certain things, which was nice, or at least reflection or depiction, maybe not discussion. Discussion might be going one step too far. Um, but, you know, so it wasn't, so I wasn't too disappointed that I sort of like figured it out because it's not always about figuring it out or not. It's like, was it an interesting and engaging experience throughout the way? So for me, it was an, again, another good way to start off the 31 Days of Horror with diving into like something new I've never seen on Netflix and which is what it was, which maybe is like, the sort of like running thread of this <laughs> project. That's not true. I didn't only watch Netflix films because in the next one, I was so happy to finally see, because I missed it in the theater, but to finally see Solo, a oh, Star Wars story, all about Han Solo. I love this movie. I was a little worried because I had avoided spoilers so much that I did not have a strong sense of what the film was going to be about other than Solo. Now, the guy that they picked for Han Solo was great. Um, it really sort of embraced the spirit of the character as we have seen in the earlier films. And for me, that was like pretty much what I needed to enjoy it. And then everything else 
was great on top of that. I loved all of the characters, um, most of the characters. I love all the characters you're supposed to love, <laughs> I guess I could say it that way, and so many of the nods to the other films and the world and all of that good stuff, and there were, and they went to some other, like, um, they did some things that haven't been done in some of the other films, but not to the extent that they thought they were, but still, it was still, I don't know what the right term is and how to not be spoiler, so I'll just say, uh, it was that, I, I don't know what to say about that. Anyway, loved it thrilled to see it another one that I watched with my family and that was so much fun I think I think we watched Ready Player One during the Civic holiday and I think we watched Solo during Thanksgiving <laughs> so it was just like all the holiday movies and uh yeah I just I am so so happy so happy and then we get back to some scary movies <laughs> I watched I'm not quite sure how to say that Malevolent so close to Benevolent <laughs> Yet, it means so much different. So this is another um, uh, 2018 horror movie that I saw on Netflix. <laughs> and this one features um, a brother and sister who are do paranormal investigations. It's set in the sort of 80s, 90s, by the tech, I would say either 80s or 90s. Um, and But they're not necessarily on the up and up in terms of actually investigating. Um, so they go into people's homes, people's, especially in people's homes where there was a family member that has passed and try to help them, the more the, the surviving family to, you know, move on. But they're really, it's doing it more for a business. And of course, because it's a horror movie, everything goes horribly wrong. Um, this one I thought was okay. Um, I, I love, I actually quite enjoy movies about paranormal investigators. I think it's almost like a subgenre now, not just paranormal films, but uh, paranormal investigator films. <laughs> um, and I thought that this one dealt with some interesting things and some different uh, perspectives and it kept me questioning a little bit here and there um, although I don't know if I can I'm trying to remember the resolve and if it felt totally I don't think it felt totally like everything got wrapped up but a lot of horror movies do that but I didn't feel like it messed anything up I'm not I wouldn't say that far just that I don't know if it felt like it was like oh, oh okay as opposed to like oh I don't know if anything got the oh <laughs> Okay, who needs star ratings when you can have different ways to say, oh, okay, so, <laughs> so Malevolent was the next one that I watched. What did I watch after that? I think I continued with this sort of creepy stuff. Yeah, I did. Um, and so next is another one that I have to say I am surprised I was disappointed in, and that is Annihilation with Natalie Portman, another one that is based on a book. See a theme here. Um... So this is based on the novel by Jeff Vandermeer, which is, I think, considered weird fiction. It's sort of thrillery, science fiction-y, speculative fiction-y, and it's about an area that's called, I think they call it Area X, and in that area, people have gone in, and nobody has come out. There's an area that's affected by something, they don't know what it is they don't go it nobody comes out I think the for me this is one that I could probably do a book to film like discussion video about but I because I didn't actually enjoy the book that much <laughs> nor the film it doesn't feel like it's super worth it um I think the book is well written it's actually written like a thriller so you really want to know what's next and the movie takes a completely different tone it is slow um I never felt like I felt tension in like horror movie tension level but I, I, you know, because I had read the book, I knew where it was going, but I still felt like they told you, like, they told you so much that you weren't questioning what was going on enough. So I felt like the tension level wasn't high enough and the pace was super slow. And I, you know, it's, and so I was just, just overall disappointed. I think there were some amazing uh, visual effects in this, but the storytelling I wasn't uh, a fan of. I didn't, I didn't like how they changed the protagonist. Um, and there were lots of changes. So I don't know, as I said, disappointing not disappointing and you know you you know whether or not you consider this a movie it's on letterboxd so i am considering it a movie and i watched it live on its premiere on youtube and that is the 24 hour 
movie marathon episode seven from Norway with love. This is created by Luke Ryan, of course, Luke Ryan. <laughs> um, and uh, he is the 24 hour movie marathon is an annual tradition created by Ryan Chataway. Links below for all of the things. Um, and it is in its seventh year. And uh, Luke premiered on YouTube the four and a half hour long, I think it's four and a half hour, maybe four hours, 20 minutes long premiere of him and doing the 24 hour movie marathon. And it was a blast to watch it live and to chat with people in the chat. And I just had a blast. And it's definitely film related because watching all of the films and you know I just had so much fun doing this and he created he has it on Letterboxd as a film as a documentary so I'm including it in my 24 hour movie marathon <laughs> or not my 24 hour movie marathon I do hope to do one at the end of the month or, or this month uh, before the end of the year um, but um, I am including it as uh, one of the films that I watched in 2018 so it counts it counts folks and then I have I have two more even though I only really need one more but because some of these might be on the fringe of whether or not like because I fell asleep during Winchester mostly I added an extra film so the next one that I watched was Animal World and <laughs> I don't even know where to start with this one so I watched this on a whim I think it's based on something else a comic maybe um and it features a guy, it's centered on a guy who is strongly affected by um, a cartoon about a clown. And then he later becomes a clown in like a video game, like a video arcade. <laughs> Stay with me. Um, and then, like, there's lots of weird stuff that I totally didn't understand. And it goes a completely different direction. And then there's, like, all of this math and, like gambling type stuff and like I am not sure exactly what was going on in this movie. It was a little long. That's the only my only real complaint about this one is that it was a little long. It was definitely strange. Like I'm not and that's not a bad thing. Um but um I like <laughs> And it was quite dark, and it's weird, because it it initially started all those strange and, like, the clown thing, and, like, you know, all of these effects, and I'm like, what exactly is going on? I have no idea, but that's okay, let's just go on this fun ride of things. But then it did end up going quite dark, and talking about human nature from quite of a dark perspective, um, and, um... So that some of that was a little tough and then like lots and lots and lots and lots of math and explaining the math and like lots of it. <laughs> so anyway, it was new this year. It came out. It's actually a Chinese film. It came out in China um, and it's on Netflix. And I just was like, what's that? <laughs> So I watched it. And as my bonus film, and I'm partly including this because it was the last um, 31 Days of Horror film that I watched, and just to add up just a little bit more because some like because of falling asleep during Winchester, um, is Bleach. And this was uh, this is based on a manga, and it follows a guy. I don't know if he's in high school or some other like if he's older. I'm getting to the point where I can't tell people's ages anymore. In terms of actors, I just don't know. Anyway, I think he was supposed to be high school, and he ends up accidentally coming across um, this creature from like another dimension kind of idea, and a reaper who's the the girl. Um, the woman, and she, uh, for, and then accidentally he becomes a reaper by proxy. So, yeah. So this one was a lot of fun. There's a lot of fighting. There's a lot of, like, winks at the camera. <laughs> There's a lot of just zaniness in it. Um, and it was, it was tons of fun. And it was the 31 Days of Horror movie, uh, or the Halloween movie that I watched with my family. We always watch something new. And this is what we picked, um, because it's got a paranormal edge to it with the Reapers and stuff like that. And there was lots of action and lots of fun and a fair amount of comedy. And it ended up being quite a blast. So there you go. Those are my, it ended up being 10. It only had to be nine, but it is 10 films that I watched during my 18 of 2018. Uh, challenge. I also watched uh, nine TV series, um, or started at least nine TV series. I'll do a separate video for that. Let me know if you participated in 18 of 2018, if it's going well, if you are still working on it, if you have finished it, um, if you'd like to check out any of these titles to add to your collection. I do have um, an account on Letterboxd, which I update not super frequently. Try to do once a month at least. I don't know. Sometimes I'm really good at it. I finally downloaded the app. <laughs> 
<laughs> so maybe it'll be more frequently. Um, I'm trying to get back in the habit of watching movies and <clears throat> And that was part of what this challenge was about, getting back in the habit of watching something that's new as opposed to something that you've heard a lot about. Of course, I watched a lot of familiar things and, and hyped things here as well. I watched Solo for crying out loud. Um, but, but also I took a lot of chances on new stuff, new to Netflix, things that I haven't heard about. You know, sometimes that paid off, sometimes it didn't, but it all ended up uh, equating to quite an enjoyable viewing experience. And I feel like I am back in the habit of watching movies and that is really, really nice. Links down below for all of of the things that I mentioned, all of the challenges, um, the movie, I'll have a list of all of the films um, and all of that good stuff. And yeah, so I, of course I will also link to my film, uh, not my film, my TV uh, edition of this so you can see the nine TV series I checked out as well. Thank you so much for watching.